Welcome back to On The Spot STEM. Today we will be tackling 2016 F equals MA problem number 23. And the problem reads, a uniform thin circular rubber band of mass M and a spring constant of K has original radius R. Now it is tossed in the air. Assume it remains circular when stabilized in the air and rotates at an angular speed omega about its center uniformly. Which of the following gives the new radius of the rubber band? So this is a problem involving rubber bands. So it feels natural to draw the rubber band. We draw the rubber band like this. And I'm going to draw it in its rotating state. So it currently has a radius of, let's call it R prime. This will be the new radius of the rubber band. Now, it doesn't seem very clear how we figure out sort of the new radius of the rubber band with respect to the old radius. But we know it's going to have something to do with how much the rubber band shifts when or grows when you rotate it at some angular speed. So we, we need some way to relate the sizes of the rubber band to the angular speed. And so if we think about it, if the rubber band gets bigger, and we know that we're modeling it by some spring because it's the problem says it has a spring constant of k. When the rubber band expands, there are going to be ten tensile forces inside the rubber band, and those could potentially contribute to some sort of centripetal acceleration. So what, our idea here is to sort of find the centripetal force on the on a bunch of little pieces of the rubber band, and then integrate over the whole rubber band to figure out sort of the a sort of constraint between the rotation omega and the size of the rubber band and the spring constant. So let's let's take a look at this. So what we do is we consider a very small piece of the rubber band. This is often the case in problems where essentially it's very hard for us to think about the system as a whole in this case of a circular rubber band where all the forces point in very different directions. But if we consider a very small piece of the rubber band, it becomes much easier to deal with. Let's consider a small piece. Let's draw it out. And let's, let's draw the, the central angle that it subtends. So this would be right here. Let's say this, let's call this little piece DL. And it has a mass of DM. And let's call this little angle here d theta. And so now our job is to figure out sort of the forces on this little piece of the rubber band. And well, there must be something causing a centripetal acceleration. And as I said earlier, this is the stretching of the rubber band. So we can draw these tension forces tension on on both sides of the, the rubber band. In essence, we know that this angle is 90 degrees because we know that the tension will point tangential to sort of the um, where we are on the rubber band. So when we draw the radius from the center, that tension force will act perpendicular to the radius at the point which the tension is acting. So now it's just our job to figure out the, the radial and the tangential accelerations of this piece. Well, as you can see by symmetry, the tangential acceleration is going to be zero, but there is a radial acceleration because of that perpendicularity that I explained earlier. So if I sort of draw a dashed line here and I draw a dashed line here, and then I'll draw this, this force component called TR representing T radial. And there's another force similarly on this side, TR. So we can write out Newton's laws. Let's just assume that, um, unlike usual, let's just assume that the positive a radial component is inward. So the sum of the forces in the radial direction is equal to, well, it's simply equal to 2 times TR. And then this will equal m dm, because we're considering a very small piece, omega squared, and Note that the radius here is r prime, so this is r prime. So we have sort of a Newton's laws here, and our job is to use this to solve the problem. Now, 
now our job is to try to find TR in terms of theta. Um, T and theta, of course. And, our, and we also need to figure out what T is. So let's do a little bit of angle chasing. If I drop a perpendicular here, I note that this small angle is equal to d theta over 2. And just by some simple angle chasing, we can get that this angle is also d theta over 2. So this simply implies that tr is t sine d theta over 2. And we can rewrite our Newton's laws. If we rewrite this to be, I'm just going to leave out the sum of the forces. So we have 2 t sine d theta over 2 equals dm omega squared r prime. Okay, so since we're considering a very small piece of the rubber band, we can employ the sine angle approximation, the small sine angle approximation. So we can rewrite this since we know that sine of a very small angle is approximately equal to that very small angle. So we can write that 2t d theta over 2 equals dm omega squared r prime. And just canceling this out yields t d theta equals dm omega squared r prime. So now we have to figure out what t is. So to figure out t, we think, let's think about the whole rubber band as a sort of spring. And so to figure out the force on the spring, we need to figure out how much this rubber band is actually extended. Well, how, how much has it extended? Well, if I take a quick tangent over here, the original length of the rubber band was given in the problem. It's simply 2 pi r, the circumference of a circle with radius r. Now the new length is 2 pi r prime. So that means the stretch is the difference between these two, which is 2 pi times r prime minus r. So that means by Hooke's law, the force is simply k times it. So 2 pi k times r prime minus r. Okay, now we go back to Newton's laws. We go back to simplifying this equation. So now we can rewrite t as 2 pi k r prime minus r d theta equals dm omega squared r prime. So now we have pretty much collapsed the equation into the variables that we want, except for these this dm and this d theta here. And all we have to do is simply integrate this around the whole rubber band. So performing the integral, we can integrate this around the whole rubber band. I'll just say we'll integrate it around the band B. Um, pretty much we're just integrating around the circle. And when we integrate, we know that the everything else is a constant except for d theta and dm. So if we integrate d theta around the whole rubber band, well, this, well, we're basically subtending a whole circle. So the integral of d theta is 2 pi. So what we get on the right, on the left hand side is 4 pi squared k r prime minus r. And when we get on the right hand side, what we if we integrate dm over the whole rubber band, we're just getting the mass of the whole rubber band. So we get m omega squared r prime. Okay. So now all we have to do is simplify to solve for r prime. So we can sort of use the distributive property, 4 pi squared k r prime minus 4 pi squared k r equals m omega squared r prime. And simplifying this further, we bring all the r prime terms to the left hand side, yielding well, we can factor out an r prime and we get 4 pi squared k minus m omega squared. That's the, the terms including r prime. And then now on the right hand side, we have 4 pi squared k r. 
now we're sort of ready to solve the problem. So now we simply have to divide both sides divide both sides by four pi squared k minus m omega squared. And what we get is r prime equals four pi squared k r over four pi squared k minus m omega squared. And now we go back to the problem and we look at the answer choices. Let's zoom in here. And we can see that D is what we're looking for and we are done.